So what's really exciting right now at Notre Dame is the fact that we're really growing quite quickly in the field of stem cells. With these uh, eight hires that we're going to be able to make over the next couple of years, it's extremely exciting to be able to bring in not just junior people, but we also have positions for senior faculty. We have an endowed full professor position and two associate professor positions, which is going to give us a lot of stature, visibility, and experience within the center also. And we're focusing on adult stem cells and induced pluripotent stem cells, or IPS cells. At the same time, we want to be able to create a interdisciplinary environment here at the university. One question that comes up quite often is, at the University of Notre Dame, which is really known for its outstanding undergraduate education, can you really do outstanding research also? And by all means, you definitely can. Rebecca Wingard in our department, who's a young, one of the younger stem cell researchers, actually has an NIH Innovator Award, which is, I think, remarkable. My lab studies the kidney, and what we're trying to do is to understand how the kidney develops uh, during normal development and how the kidney can regenerate after injury. We're interested in the, the stem cells that give rise to the different cell types within the nephrons, and so we want to understand is there a stem cell that gives rise to all the cell types? Is there a stem cell that gives rise to several different multipotent cells that makes various cell types? And that's a question that's unresolved in the field of nephrology. How do those different cell types emerge and how are they related to, um, to the stem cells that found the organ? Related to that is then, do any of those cells stick around and uh, fuel the regeneration? Or do all the cells in the context of a kidney injury have some capacity to respond to that injury by re-entering the cell cycle and uh, making more cells that can be patterned to make various cell types in the kidney. The distinction between labs that are studying these questions would be the ways in which they're going about trying to identify the genes and, uh, and understand their functions. And our particular strategy is to use an animal model, to use a zebrafish, because it has a series of genetic attributes that lend itself to gene discovery and also to the assignation of function of various genes. And we can do those processes in a way that is relatively rapid compared to more advanced uh, species such as a rodent model uh, of genetics. So Athanasia Panopoulos, who we hired about a year and a half ago, who came to us from the Salk Institute, is our first hire in the IPS cell research area. So what I decided to do at Notre Dame was kind of combine my different experiences between the things I learned about cancer and blood cell development and now these earlier stages of specification from induced pluripotent stem cells because one of the things that was discovered is that during reprogramming itself, a lot of the pathways were paralleling oncogenesis. And so here we have this method where we can actually watch cells acquire stem cell characteristics. And that's a very unique opportunity because for during this time where reprogramming was forming, the cancer, quote, stem cell field was developing. One of the things I wanted to explore here was the mechanisms by which reprogramming is occurring. Can those teach us how some cancer cells are apparently acquiring stem cell characteristics? We are looking at um, specific mechanisms that we know that are important in cancer where the cancer literature might hint that there are stem cell specific signatures in these subpopulations. And then looking at iPS cells to see where are they paralleling and how can we pinpoint those mechanisms and study them. By studying both, we can actually learn about both independently and learn about reprogramming mechanisms, for instance, even if they aren't turn out to be relevant for cancer stem cell acquisition iPS cells enable us to model disease and to study diseases in ways we couldn't do before and answer some fundamental questions about developmental biology. So one of the other things focuses in my lab is understanding kind of blood cell development from a reprogramming perspective with the long-term holy grail goal that all of us have, which is can we actually generate stem cells in a dish that could be used in a bone marrow transplant. So we also hope to play a role in ironing out some of the mechanisms of why we haven't been able to do that thus far and hopefully contributing to that goal being achieved someday. And so what always drove the, my research and my questions and things that I was interested in was the scientific question itself. 
and not necessarily the implications, the broad implications it would have on society. And so one of the things we want to do at the University of Notre Dame is to create an environment where we can have that discussion, where we can talk about the pros and the cons, not just of human embryonic stem cells, but there's pros and cons associated with adult stem cells and iPS cells. Not the same sort of ethical and moral types of questions, but there are questions such as, what happens if we are able to regenerate tissues and extend human life? We hope to be able to create that environment where we can address those questions between the scientists, the lawyers in the law school, the theologians, the philosophers, the engineers. And by informing each other, we can provide a very deep and rich answer that we can then portray to the media and to society.